Now, God is not asking the unsaved world anything. But he does have a great deal to say about nations. And the nation Israel that he chose and dealt with them furnishes a pattern to the other nations of the world. Now, we have had what has been so-called a Christian civilization in Europe. It never was really Christian, but it had the semblance of it. The laws were patterned after this, and these are laws for a nation. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Among those are other things. God condemned drunkenness. God condemned homosexuality. And he has the strongest language for that. He says when a people or an individual indulges in that, and I don't care what you call it, my friend, God says he gave them up. He gave up this nation. They were guilty of that. They were guilty of indulging in these sins. We today are guilty of the same thing. There's no knowledge of God in this land. Oh, I know there's a church on every corner, and Sunday morning you can hear church bells everywhere. But, of course, a very small percentage of the population go to church. And very few are actually being reached with the Word of God. There is a Gideon Bible in every hotel room and motel room in this country. As far as I know, the first thing I do is when I go to a new hotel or a new motel to stay, I look around for the Gideon Bible. And I've noticed recently it's been out on the table. That is, it's been out and opened up so you can see it. Now, I do not know how much it's being read. The Gideons say they receive many letters telling of conversion. But I'm sure that a great many of those Bibles are not ever opened. I know I've been to several places where I'm convinced that the Bible had never been opened before. We're a nation of biblical ignoramuses. We do not know the Word of God today in this land. But the Watergate hearings in Washington certainly turn the spotlight on our government and actually not to one political party, but to both political parties, that there is corruption in this land of ours. And I wasn't quite sure whether all of the liars were sitting in the witness stand or were on the other side on the committee. And I think you'll find them in both parties. I think that you'll find corruption today in this land in both parties, And the chairman of the committee, I was greatly disappointed in him, the way he not only misquoted Scripture, he misinterpreted it, and said that the four Gospels contradicted each other. And that went out on television. And may I say to you, I, for one, protest that, because I felt like demanding equal time, everybody else demands equal time, to answer that, that there is no contradiction in the four Gospels. And when a man says that, he reveals a woeful ignorance of the Word of God. Now, I'm saying all of this to say this, that our land is in the same kind of a condition that these people were in in that day. I'm going to take just one particular phase. We're told that a few years ago that in Washington, there were 128 cocktail parties every day. And again, the spotlight that's been turned on this hearings reveals that there's drinking probably in Washington. It couldn't be more in Los Angeles, but there's been a great deal of it there. Now, I want to share with you today some facts and figures, and there are a few brave editors today in this country, but most of it's the liberal press. They follow one particular line, and just like Israel was brainwashed, Our nation today is being brainwashed by nothing in the world but propaganda and liberalism. But down in San Diego, the local paper down there had a headline, and this goes back to January the 11th, 1972. It was on the front page of the paper, bottom of the page, but it was a headline. Alcoholics cost area businesses $10 million. May I say to you, People cry about the high cost of living. 
cry out about the high cost of war and high cost of government. All of that is true. But who's crying out against liquor today? No one's crying out against it. And yet, right here in Los Angeles, they say that in this country there are nine million American workers who are alcoholics, and 450,000 of them are in Los Angeles County. What do you suppose that has to do with what you buy at the store today? They say, preacher, this is none of your business. It's my business in several different ways, and I wish there were more crying out against this sort of thing. The pulpits become extremely silent in these matters, and when I go to the store, I'm paying a higher price for things because government and the nation, we are engaged in gross immorality today, breaking these Ten Commandments. You don't get by with it as a nation. These commandments have been the basis of every so-called Christian civilization, and I'm not going to debate that point with anyone. And it's estimated that half of the 55,000 deaths on U.S. highways and streets were the result of alcohol drinking. My, we had protests about the killing in Vietnam. There was more killing by alcohol in accidents. And I found nobody leading a protest in front of a brewery or the cocktail lounge. It's estimated that 50 $15 billion is spent today for alcoholic beverage. Now, will you listen to this? Today, they're saying alcoholism is a disease. And this has been answered by a doctor. He says, alcoholism a disease? If so, listen to this. It's the only disease contracted by an act of the will. It's the only disease that is habit-forming. It's the only disease that comes in a bottle. It's the only disease causing hundreds of thousands of family disruptions. It's the only disease promoting crime and brutality. It's the only disease contributing to hundreds of thousands of automobile accidents. It is the only disease playing a major part in over 50% of the more than 50,000 annual highway deaths. It is the only disease which is sold by license. It's the only disease that's bought in grocery stores, drug stores, and well-mark retail outlets. It's the only disease that is taxed by the government. And on and on. There's more to this. I'll just read that to you today. May I say to you, our eyes are shut to this because we've been brainwashed and the liquor interests have this tremendous control today. And as a result... Our nation sinks lower and lower because we have what's called a new morality. and wasn't new at all. Israel was practicing it way back yonder in about 700 B.C., and I wouldn't call it new morality back there by any means. They were breaking all these commandments, and God condemned them for it. And homosexuality was practiced even back as far as Sodom and Gomorrah. It's the reason he destroyed these places. He judged them. And today, actually, some of the legislatures filled with men ignorant of the Word of God, ignorant of this thing which has been basic for this nation of ours, and they pass legislation that makes it so that two homosexuals can get married. And today, that they are to be brought into society and they are to be treated as a disease. My friend, is this... The crowd that we want to bring into society today, the liberal church says that we should not consider them sinners. And I know I speak to many homosexuals. I'll get letters on this. May I say to you, the Lord Jesus Christ says that you've got to be born again. And he can deliver you from it. These things are not diseases today. But when they're treated as what they really are, sin, then God can deal with us. We are doomed as a nation. As much as Israel was condemned and sent into captivity. And after all, they were God's chosen people. We are not. By any stretch of the imagination, we can't make that claim. But this is the basis on which God judges nations. Now, spend a little time there. 
And I got warmed up on that. I think somebody today needs to be saying something along this line. But the pulpit is strangely silent in this connection. Well, one reason, they never study Hosea. You know, here's one of the forgotten prophets. Now I'm going to keep on reading. Verse 3, Therefore shall the land mourn, and every one that dwelleth in it shall languish with the beasts of the field, with the fowls of the heavens, yea, the fish of the sea also shall be taken away. The land will languish. And all of a sudden we found out that we're polluting everything today. When I was a boy, I went swimming in a swimming hole in a creek in southern Oklahoma that was as clear. You could see 25 feet to the bottom. My friend, may I say to you, it smells to high heaven. We polluted the land today. The land here is mourning. And then another very interesting thing is, a few years ago it was plenty. All of the granaries were filled with grain. There was plenty of everything. And may I say today, we're hearing something about scarcity. You see, when God judges a nation, the land is involved, and even the beasts and the fowls have to suffer for the sin of man. And they are suffering also today because of man's sin. Verse 4, Yet let no man strive, nor reprove another, for thy people are as they that strive with the priests. What has happened? Why, the priest in that day was not doing his duty, not warning the people. And God had raised up the prophet. What about that? Verse 5, Therefore shalt thou fall in the day, and the prophet shall fall with thee in the night, and I will destroy thy mother. That is the nation. Why? Because now even there were the false prophets that were rising up and telling people, well, everything's going to be all right. This thing's going to work out. We live in a new day, and the Bible is an old book, and the Ten Commandments, they belong to the past, to our grandfathers and grandmothers, but we today have reached a very high plane. May I say to you, we are a dirty lot. We have sunk very low today as a nation and as a people. Now, verse 6 is probably one of the most quoted verses. It's considered to be one of the most familiar verses. I'm reading now, Hosea 4, verse 6, "...my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge." That's the reason we're teaching the Bible today. That's the reason we're going into a book like this, is because, my friend, it's the ignorance of the Word of God. They're destroyed for lack of knowledge." Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I'll also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me. You see, God intended the whole nation to be priests unto him. And in the millennium, they will be that. But God says, you're not even going to have priests at this particular time. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. That is, even the people of the nation. Now, God says... I will also forget you, because you've forgotten me. In other words, they've come to the time of judgment, because they've gone through a long, sordid history of departing from the Lord. Now, the minute that, Christian friend, you get away from the Word of God, you could not live a triumphant Christian life by any means. You could not live well-pleasing to the Lord. And I do not care... How many of these method conferences you go to that have all these little gimmicks that if you do this and do that and do the other thing, that things are going to work all right for you in your home and in your place of business and in your social life, and everything will work out right. My friend, the Word of God makes it very clear that it's not by these little gimmicks, these little methods. It's by a knowledge of the Word of God. Now... That is as clear as the noonday sun in this book and certainly in other places.